this shoot has been a long time in the making, so I'm excited to start working on it today. I've also had these strawberries and strawberry cheesecake sitting in my fridge for one week now, so we are also working against the clock. The overarching theme of this candle shoot is to showcase the scent notes using ingredients as props. I'm also a bit nervous about the shoot because it involves a lot of food-based ingredients and I'm not that used to shooting with food these days. Ugh, look at how much freezer burn is on this cake. Maybe adding some pretty strawberry slices will distract from the freeze. This is seriously the most darling and sweet setup I have ever done. I'm so happy with these pops. The first shot wasn't actually that daunting, so I'm looking forward to working on the rest of this shoot. My game plan today is to tackle all of the shots that require food props because I actually got these fresh ingredients over a week ago. The scent I'm working on right now is based on Meyer lemons and lemon shortbread cookies. Also, all of the candle scents for this brand are music inspired, hence the presence of the record in every shot. I'm going to attempt to bite one of the cookies since a bite mark might be cute to have. That completely broke apart, so I'm going to try the nibbling method this time. And it worked! Doesn't that just give the props more life? These lemons are balanced thanks to the use of toothpicks, which is why they're also falling as a group. This next one is a fun one, but for whatever reason, it was hard tracking down these carnival style lollipops in this smaller size. I'm also going to play around with placing the records in a different way so it stops looking all the same. I had a vague vision of layers of blocks so the lollipops would have more places to be propped up. But then I felt like those square shapes clashed with the round shapes of the records, so it wasn't a good match. So I decided to try the same idea with round blocks instead, and I think this works so much better. Playing around with leaning these lollipops on different levels all around. I even tried to shoot a lollipop in a more shallow depth of field, but it felt like there would be too many of them, and a blurred lollipop doesn't give the swirl enough credit. The next setup involves a fancy drink situation and a decanter. These decanters really elevate the presentation of alcohol. If I ever have a bar cart, I'm definitely getting one of these. And as usual, I'm using the super affordable low brow Arizona tea as my fancy whiskey. Like last time, I'm trying different configurations with the records. In the end, against the wall worked best for this setup.
Okay, we have a few different ingredient props to style for this next shot. I have the idea to play with more interaction between the ingredients and the records, so let's see if this works out. A good pro tip for working with multiples of the same food prop is to show it in different ways, such as cut up and whole. This works well, especially with larger fruit. And it helps break up the scene and makes the styling look more interesting. It's more fun to show them as one whole apple and a few apple slices. And, as you can see with the slices, there's more opportunities to play around with the positioning and styling. Moving on to the next scene, we're pulling out my beloved mocha pot. Once I have convinced myself I am a regular coffee drinker and have a kitchen of my own, I will be buying a real Bialetti. I'm not willing to waste good coffee for a photo though, so it's just instant coffee in the cup. This was such a dangerous prop to work with. Because salted caramels happen to be one of my favorite candies, I rationed myself to eating only one a day until this shoot was done. The next part of this same shot, we're shooting separately because things are going to get a bit messy. I'm using this caramel sauce as a substitute for butterscotch sauce. My vision is to have it dripping off this wooden spoon right above the candle. Because my hands are needed, I'm shooting this with a camera on a tripod using a self-timer. Yes! This is exactly the kind of shot I was hoping to get. The plastic bag was definitely a good idea. This next setup is going to be pretty simple compared to the last few. I'm working with herbal tobacco, which I've actually never seen in real life, and vanilla beans. First up, I'm reshooting the caramel candies setup. Thankfully, I don't need to reshoot the sauce and spoon since that will be edited in later. I don't know what happened. I guess I got into a flow state when shooting. I thought I was paying close attention to details like which ingredients to use, but I forgot to double check something so obvious like if the correct candle was being shot. I'm double checking with the initial photos I took to make sure I'm recreating the exact same setup. It's been a few days, I've already started editing these photos and I want to wrap up as many remaining setups as I can today. This is probably my first time ever since starting product photography that I'm using fake flowers. The quality can be hit or miss when it comes to artificial flowers and I've honestly never liked how they looked. I'm using a mix of gardenias and jasmine flowers for this shot. Gardenias are pretty hard to get fresh here, so this is kind of my only option. My vision was to have a mix of the flowers, framing the candle so it looked like it was in a whimsical garden. I 
hated the quality of these jasmine flowers. They were so plasticky and the leaves were such a bright green color that I knew I had my work cut out for me in Photoshop. This next setup also involves flowers. I'm using only fake ones throughout this entire shoot. We're working with magnolias and freesias. And although these pink ones are pretty, they look nothing like what freesias are supposed to look like. Adding a block to create some height difference between the flowers. There are also some vanilla beans in this shot. I'm trying to figure out the best way to incorporate them so they're still visible against the busy flowers and dark record color. I switched the vanilla beans to the other side since they were blending into the record's dark color too much. This cactus is cute, but seriously so fake looking. I didn't want to cheapen the look of this brand with this cactus, so my plan is to move it to the back and blur it slightly with a shallow depth of field, adding some sandalwood piles as well. I'm using Palo Santo as a substitute since it's cheaper and will adjust the color in Photoshop later. We are nearing the end by now. Thank you for sticking with me. Still, if you've made it this far, comment lavender if you're still watching. This candle scent is titled Purple Haze, so I want to create a smoky effect with the Palo Santo prop. It's totally not smoking. Guess that's another element for me to photoshop then. Subscribe if you want to see how to add smoke effects in editing. Oh my god, you guys, I did it again. I photographed the wrong candle for two setups I just finished. I am now questioning my sanity. I seriously can't believe this happened twice in the same shoot no other choice but to reshoot, so that's what we're doing. We have finally made it to the last shot. It's always a bit bittersweet when a fun shoot comes to an end. The main ingredients in the shot are churros. The shape of churros is a bit tricky to style with. This small block attached with sticky tack should help the churro stay in place at an angle. I used a clear one so it would be easier to edit out later. <laughs> Oops, each move seems to shed so much sugar. This was a blast to work on and I got to be really playful and creative with the setups which I loved. But I am also so tired of working on the shoot by this point. editing tip here. I thought I would create a proper outro that wasn't about me complaining. I also want to remind you to subscribe because I'm going to be working up on a part two for this video which would show all the editing process for a few of the more complicated shots uh, from this shoot. So if you're interested or curious to learn how to add smoke effects, to add composite images of that like one dripping sauce spoon um, if you want to know how i photoshopped all those fake flowers to make them look really nice and natural looking 
subscribe and stay tuned because there's going to be a follow-up video just for that. As always, thank you so much for watching, especially if you stuck around until the end. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one.